so that was really for my thesis that I uh, immersed myself in her ideas and then subsequently picked it up when I was head of faculty here and we were uh, undertaking a whole series of activities in celebration of the centenary of Nightingale's death, uh, but also 150 years celebrations of our own faculty. So that was 2010 and a big year for us. So a series of different uh, types of activities, including producing an edited volume with my colleague Siobhan Nelson from the University of Toronto called Notes on Nightingale. Anyone who wants to read that, please feel free. Yes, the, the way in which uh, Nightingale's work came to the attention of the British public was really through the publicity and press coverage by the Times and specifically a journal journalist called William uh, Howard Russell. And he was stationed in the Crimea to, to cover the war and, as you can imagine, was appalled by the carnage and neglect that he found there because this was not a war in which there was a, an obvious and clear British hero who emerged from the war. It was, in many ways, a war that was predicated on a series of, of very tragic failures. What made the Nightingale School different was that it was trying to inject uh, a sense of system into that process, at which it was only partially successful and actually reading the accounts of the early probationers there um, you get a sense that it was a very improvised and somewhat ad hoc program which was rather thin on theoretical learning and rather top heavy on hard work so um, from that point of view that's that's not a legacy I think that many would wish to have seen perpetuated there was a creation of a leadership network. I think that's probably one of the, the longest lasting legacies from the Nightingale School. I think hospital design was, was one of her major contributions. She wrote articles for an architectural journal called The Builder. But obviously her, her uh, Emphasis on hygiene itself is very much part of uh, contemporary practice as well as practice in, in the past. And um, her epidemiological survey work was incredibly impressive using some of the latest techniques. She trained in mathematics and statistics and she deployed those data analytic methods in creating the evidence base to justify the case for change. I think what she was interested in primarily was the intelligent use of knowledge and that was really what fired her mission and fired her imagination. She wasn't in favour of too theoretical a training for nurses and she believed that this would essentially undermine the impact of what nurses um, could accomplish. So if I were to nutshell it, I think she was interested in using data and information primarily as a means of turning information into uh, intelligence and that intelligence into impact through its practical application at every turn. the respect for and valuing of evidence, not only as a tool of persuasion, 
uh, for policymakers, which is what Nightingale was extremely adept at deploying, but also in everyday practice and being sure of your ground in terms of justifying uh, choices in care. But also being able to participate and as an equal member of the multidisciplinary team. This was not something that Nightingale herself um, wrote explicitly about, but it was certainly something that she enacted in her own practice. She was an amazing team worker. She knew how to give leadership, but also to work with the leaders in the field It's also important to remember that she was a fun person and with a very warm and generous personality. But perhaps alongside that extraordinary warmth, there was also a shaft of steel. And I don't think she's someone you would want to have gotten on the wrong side of either.